Los Angeles Innocence Project pursuing new evidence and uh, a status hearing scheduled for today, Tuesday. He's, uh, of course, convicted of first-degree murder in 2004 for the deaths of his pregnant wife, Lacey Peterson, and their unborn son. He's been granted a status hearing by a California judge following the involvement of the Los Angeles Innocence Project. Peterson's case, of course, garnered national attention. Uh, And now, today... There's a Zoom meeting or Zoom hearing in which the Los Angeles Innocence Project's representatives will be present in person before Judge Elizabeth Hill. Now 51 years old, Peterson has served over two decades in prison after initially being sentenced to death, later commuted with uh, commuted to life without the possibility of the uh, parole. The involvement of the L.A. Innocence Project signals a significant development. The organization known for taking on cases with potential DNA evidence to prove innocence believes that Peterson's state and federal constitutional rights were violated during a recent appearance on Court TV's opening statements with Julie Grant, criminal defense attorney, Calissa Earley highlighted the importance of the Los Angeles Innocence Project's involvement, stating ultimately his constitutional rights were violated. So if there was any exculpatory evidence that can exonerate him that they see, then it's worth going after. And in this case, that exculpatory evidence is DNA evidence. Los Angeles Innocence Project seeks to conduct DNA testing on specific items related to the case, including a hammer believed to have been present at a burglary scene across the street from the Peterson's home around the time of Lacey Peterson's disappearance. Additionally, they aim to test a bloodstained mattress found in a burned-out van in the Peterson's neighborhood on Christmas Day of 2002. According to court filings from the Los Angeles Innocence Project, new evidence supports Peterson's claim of innocence and raises questions about who abducted and killed Lacey and Connor Peterson. The documents assert violations of Peterson's constitutional rights and claim of actual innocence backed by newly discovered evidence. Well, a new trial may be ordered if Peterson's due process is found to have been violated. It remains a very uphill battle despite public scrutiny over Peterson's behavior, including infidelity. The focus lies on the potential new evidence and constitutional violations. Cameras will be permitted in the courtroom and uh, we'll bring you that uh, audio and video on our YouTube channel as well uh, later in the day. Uh, yeah, still, how do you explain the relationship? How do you explain being out fishing where they found the bodies on Christmas mm-hmm. Day? And you were sturgeon fishing. You don't you don't use like a hook and pole for sturgeon fishing, by the way. No. Um, he was. But that's what he said he was doing. Um, well, he might have been a dumb fisherman, I guess. Well, he's. Yeah. Um, there's just too much to Scott Peterson that does not add up for this. What really bothers me, Tony, is that, okay, fine. You're, you're cheating on your wife. Let's just say that that's just the way he was. The fact that he told his quote unquote girlfriend and the, the, the girlfriend didn't even know that the wife existed. So it, it just seems like he was setting up his life to not even have her in it. And the, the child that was coming, like he was just living his life. And those two exist at some point. Well, completely. You know? I mean, he listened to his voicemails that he sent his mistress when he was, um, it, at, when they were searching for Lacey Peterson, uh, he's talking about being, Oh, I'm in like Paris and I'm watching the new year roll in. And, it was all these lies about where he was and what he was doing and just having no feeling or empathy that his wife and unborn kid are gone or at least missing at that moment in time. Um, He's, you know, keeping up the charade of this affair on the side. It just shows monstrous, monstrous behavior. Even if he didn't kill them, he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life just for being a monster and being capable of doing that. Because he, he clearly demonstrated he's capable of being this monster. God knows what he could do if he was out. Um, but I, 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 there's no way he didn't kill them. There's just isn't. I'm sorry. Might, might they find DNA evidence that's interesting? Sure. But I, I just feel like there's far too much that goes against Scott Peterson than anyone else. I agree with that. And let's just say there was a 
well, they're saying there was a burglary scene across the street. Mm -hmm. What if he did that to try to, you know, move authorities off of him, make it look like something else happened? I wouldn't put it, but, you know, past him that he would make up some scenario somewhere else to try to veer the attention off of it, off of him. Well, and, and here's the thing. These are pieces of evidence that exist, but we do not have any results from any of them yet. It's not like they're sitting here going, look, we have DNA testing on this piece of evidence from the burglary scene, and it's a different DNA. It's not Scott Peterson or, uh, I don't know, there, there's so many things than the car with the burned out car with the mattress. None of it has ever been connected to Scott Peterson. Um, yeah. I mean, might they take a look at this and it shows his DNA, which could be a possibility. They're just saying we have this evidence here that maybe we should take a look at. And if this actually does connect to anything, we'll have another hearing, and see where you go from there. But they're not, it's not like there's new evidence here that shows Scott Peterson was at a different place in time and couldn't have possibly done this by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. It's just more like there's some pieces of evidence that weren't looked at, but they also don't really directly tie anything to anyone either. Yeah. So. It, this was just such a sad case. Uh, you know, if, if you wanted to be done with your wife and, and go off with this other woman, just go. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's ways to get out of your marriage instead of killing your wife and your unborn child. There's just ways to to separate and be done. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This still feels like a play to me by the LA Innocence Project to get attention and to kind of get some traction because uh, yeah. there, there's a lot of innocence projects out there. This is just one of them. Uh, time will tell. We'll see what happens in that hearing and we'll bring it to you. Press subscribe so you don't miss that. Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.